Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we have something a little bit different. We've got two Snap-on scan tools. We've got the brand new Triton D10. My Snap-on dealer actually left me his uh, demo model uh, about a week ago to play with, check out, and see how I liked. And we've got my Snap-on Zeus scan tool. Those of you familiar with the channel, watch the videos. Uh, you know I bought this scanner, I believe it was around April of 2018, so I've had this scanner for nearly three years now. So we're going to look at the new D10. This is uh, not really for you viewers that are doing DIY or prayers on your Subarus. This is more for those professional technicians out there thinking about the Snap-on uh, Triton D10, thinking about upgrading if you have a D8 or an older Modus. Uh, this is the evolution of the old Modus series, which is the Modus. Then you had the Modus Ultra, the Modus Edge. Uh, then I think the Triton D8 and now the D10. Uh, hopefully I'm not forgetting one in there in between. Uh, and most of you know that the Zeus is the evolution of the old Varus. There was the Varus, the Varus Wireless, the Varus Pro, and then the Varus Edge that was out for a very short time before Snap-on introduced the Zeus and made a lot of Varus Edge buyers very mad by quickly uh, making it obsolete after they purchased it. Uh, so, uh, you know, this, this has been my main workhorse, the Zeus. I do have now a Subaru Select Monitor 3, which is the Subaru factory scan tool, due to the fact that the Snap-on Zeus is not capable of doing uh, several things I needed to do when servicing Subarus. Subarus have always had a very um, not great history of support from Snap-on diagnostic uh, scan tools. Uh, there's a lot of information missing, there's a lot of module access missing, a lot of functional tests that Snap-on never put in the scanners from Subaru, which kind of requires you to get a select monitor for a more dealer level repairs and uh, you know, the like the CVT, when you do anything to the CVT and you have to do a learn process. Uh, the Snap-on scanner cannot do it at least my Zeus, which is on 18.2 software, which is the software it came with in 2018. I've not updated it yet. Now the Triton is on 21.2, which is the current uh, software package. So we're gonna get into the Triton. I'm gonna hook it up to my 2013 Crosstrek just to play around and see what differences uh, on a Subaru level, what they have added in terms of functionality to 21.2 since 18. Dot two, which there's like, let's see, 18.2, 18.4, 19.2, 19.4, 22, 24, 21, 2. So there's been eight updates between where my Zeus is and where the new Triton is. So we'll see how much more you can do with a Subaru with the newest update than the old 18.2. Not saying my Zeus isn't capable of doing it, I could get the 21.2 update that the Triton has and do what it does. Uh, but, you know, if it's not giving me any more functionality, any more coverage on Subaru vehicles, there's no point in me paying the $12.95 to update. I know that's not $12.95 for you viewers. Um, so we're going to get into it, compare and contrast them a little bit. Just an overview of the Triton D10. I looked on uh, YouTube just the other day and no one really has a video out on the Triton D10. It's set for Snap-on and, you know, it's their official marketing videos. Uh, like I said, I've only had it a week playing with it so far. Pretty impressive. I love the size of the screen. This thing is super fast, really quick, not being enclosed. We're just going to do a boot test. Both are powered off completely. The Triton smokes the Zeus, but the Zeus being a quote unquote workstation with being a Windows operating system. Uh, the Zeus, the Varus, and the larger line, the flagship, they were a turn it on first thing in the morning, keep it on the charging dock, and put it to sleep when you're not using it, and then quick boot it from sleep. Uh, it's not a shut down every time you're done scanning a vehicle and then boot it up kind of thing. Uh, the Triton, on the other hand, would be a when you hook it up, turn it on kind of thing, but it just smokes it. The startup speed of these things have gotten insane, so we'll go ahead and three, two, one boot them up and it only takes two seconds. You're already loaded with the Triton ready to scan. It is that quick. Uh, so the Zeus is gonna go through its uh, system restore check, all that, the Windows 
typical boot system. It's on Windows 10, as you see, we're, all, we're just now getting to Windows starting. So we could already be pulling codes with the Triton compared to the Zeus, but again, uh, the Zeus is not something you have to power up every time you go to scan a vehicle in a normal shop setting. You'd keep it on all day. So this is a loaner unit, as you see here. It has been activated for the trial period. It was 30 days unlocked with the um, advanced diagnostics enabled. And our Zeus finally come online. Just booting into Windows now. We can't scan yet because uh, the diagnostic software, the shop stream software has to load in, which is now starting. So again, we've already read through the codes and started diagnosing with the Triton, whereas the Zeus, again, is still trying to uh, wake up and yawn and stretch and get ready for the day's work. So one thing I love immediately about the Triton is the dark theme. Uh, that was something I never really liked on some of the older scanners, especially when the Tritons first came out, I think. The Zeus still has it. It's a really light theme. I know that's a trivial thing is the theme uh, of the scan tool, this being a light theme, this being a dark theme. Uh, but most of you, I'm sure, agree that most of you set your apps and things into dark mode. It's just a little bit less stressful on the eyes looking at a bright screen. Uh, you know, a dark screen is much more easy on the eyes to look at. So loading in uh, from the main menu, now that the Zeus is ready to go. Uh, I'll bring you in closer real quick and we'll take a look at the screens and what uh, we have on the Zeus we don't have on the Triton and, uh, you know, see a little bit of that gap in the price. Really quick, the Triton D10 has a list price of $61.95, not $61.95. And I believe the Zeus has come down. I think it was around $13,000. About the time I was looking at it, I think they're more in line about $9.99 or $10,000, somewhere that, around that range. I know when I bought mine, I got it much cheaper because the data package for the Intelligent Diagnostic Suite was an additional add-on, and I did not need nor want the Intelligent Diagnostics. I don't need the scan tool to go through and red flag uh, PIDs that are out of scope. I've been doing this long enough where I can figure out things of that nature without, you know, it needing it. Uh, now talking about intelligent diagnostics real quick, that is something Snap-on came out with, I think in the last four or five years, maybe not even that long. And for upper level technicians, technicians that have been doing this a while, uh, people that are familiar with and uh, try to specialize in diagnostics and drivability concerns, intelligent diagnostics is not gonna help you really one bit. It's more of a thing that, say, a shop owner that has multiple employees would want, especially if they have uh, multiple levels of experience in their workers. So if you have an apprentice, if you have some C-Tech, some guys that have only been in the field a couple years, the Intelligent, Diagnost uh, the Intelligent Diagnostic Suite uh, really helps those guys as it helps them learn uh, you know, what to look for when looking for a PIDs list, looking at the live data, uh, the fact that it can flag those PIDs that are out of parameters or going wild or correlate to the trouble code that's currently active. That's great as a learning tool to help streamline them, help them get quicker to the correct diagnosis. But again, for the cost, I never saw the need to have it, nor so I never activated it past the trial period you get when you buy the new scan tool. So this one does have that active since it's in demonstration mode. Mine does not have that active because it ran out 30 days after I bought it back in 2018. All right, so again, moving the camera here, we'll look at the two and see the difference between the big flagship and uh, the next level down, uh, what you're getting for the extra cost on the Zeus over the D10. Okay, so starting with the Triton, we've got scanner, we've got OBD2, uh, there's the global generic scan. We've got the guided component test. We've got the scope, scope multimeter. We've got quick lookups. We've got previous vehicle data. We've got training and support, and we've got tools for our main menu icons. On the Zeus, we've got scanner OBD2, OBD direct, uh, guided component test, scope multimeter. We've got sure track. We've got repair information. We've got vehicle history. We've got quick lookups, data management. Uh, we've got help, system settings, and then the exit to shut down the software. Uh, so the main advantage of the Zeus, we'll get that out of the way now. Uh, the Zeus, again, is the flagship. 
It is a Windows 10 based operating system. It does operate as a laptop desktop computer. You have your start menu, everything you'd expect in a regular Windows computer. You can download programs, add programs to it. You've got a standard uh, solid state hard drive. You've got things of that nature where this is just a scan tool. It's got a dedicated snap-on built uh, operating system just for running diagnostic software. There is no Windows here. There is no computer, tablet, thing of that nature. So in the diagnostic suite, most of things interchange between the two. Uh, the big thing on the Zeus is you have access to SureTrack directly, which I think you get it not so much directly as you do. I think you can pull it up like it is on the website with the Zeus, whereas it'll link to articles through the Triton, as well as the repair information. If you've got uh, shop keys, Mitchell, well, not Mitchell. Mitchell and Shop Keys, that's a, that's a whole nother ordeal. Well, Snap-on owns both, but they're, they split the company in half and compete against themselves, which is ridiculous. Another thing I didn't like is a Snap-on dealer. But repair information, you can actually pull up your, um, your repair software and switch back and forth between service manual and scan tool all in one on this machine, where if this, you'd need a laptop as a supplement uh, to go between the two sources of information. Uh, you have the data manager on this. This does have a shop management software on it where you can keep track of customer vehicles, customer information, uh, look through stuff. You have an area to uh, save screenshots. You have an area to save uh, scope data, things of that nature, glitch captures. Uh, there is an integrated uh camera on the back of this scan tool so you can go in and pop pictures of issues with a customer vehicle load it in put it on a printable uh, vehicle inspection have that wirelessly print out Th this is more of an all-in-one run of business kind of tool whereas this is more of a the technician needs it as a tool to fix the vehicle this is basically trying to do everything and for the most part it does it all pretty well that's some of the main differences in this. Now, as far as the hardware, the chassis of this thing, uh, first off, the Triton is a wired connection like most scan tools. You have a cable hardwired to the scan tool that hooks to the OBD2 connector. Uh, the Zeus uses a wireless module. Uh, it is all wireless connectivity. So you have a little Bluetooth module here that you plug into the OBD2 port and uh, you can walk around the vehicle, have the vehicle up on the lift, have the scanner with you. You don't have to be tethered to the OBD2 port underneath the dashboard with the Zeus. Uh, hardware specs, again, when we look at the lab scope, the oscilloscope in these, uh, the Zeus has the advantage as it's got a detachable four channel lab scope and the Triton has a built into chassis two channel lab scope. So for most of your testing, a two channel lab scope is all you'll really need. Rarely do you ever need three or four channels. There are some instances where I've had to use three or four channels, but it's very far and few between. You can get away doing so much testing and diagnostic work with just a two channel scope. So, you know, if you're trying to save the money, you're trying to figure out what you're gonna get. Um, Again, comparing the Triton and the Zeus is like apples and oranges. Honestly, a, a fairer comparison would be the Triton D10 versus the Triton D8, but I do not have a D8 to compare the D10 to, so we're, we're working with what we got here. So case in point, since we're on the loaner unit, I think we can go in under a demo, which this thing is super fast, super responsive. So got a component test. Uh, let's see if demo is in here training and classes. I haven't really played with this part. The power user test, features and benefits, how to's. So there's a lot of learning in this. They also give you lots of tips and help that you don't see in some of the other scan tools. So the demo, okay, demonstration, there we go. Oh, I think it's like a Chevrolet, Tahoe, or Suburban that usually is with uh, snap-on tools. So you go in the guided component test, you pick your you make model vehicle. And you get a whole list of things, ABS, body electrical, charging system, driver aids, engine, you know, everything you could need. So let's go into engine. 
Uh, let's look at, say, cam sensor. Component information. Camshaft position sensor is a three-wire sensor that provides a digital output signal. The three circuits consist of the cam sensor voltage reference, a low reference voltage, and an output signal circuit. Provides a digital on-off DC voltage of various frequency with four varying width output pulses per each camshaft revolution. This information is then used to sequence the ignition timing and the fuel injection events of the engine. It then shows you the pigtail. It also gives you a diagram, wiring diagram, of what each of the wires are colored and what they are for. Also tells you the location of this sensor and the best area to check this sensor. Love, love, love the guided component test. Anyone can come in any skill level and the scan tool will spoon feed you how to diagnose an issue. Almost anything you want to test. So you go in, again, we went into the cam sensor, component information, we can go a, do a key off engine cranking test, we can do a frequency test, we can do a signature test, we can do an out of range, no signal test. So let's look at a signature test. So signature test, we've got uh, it'll say, it tells you exactly what to do. Again, this thing spoon feeds you how to diagnose something, how to check a component. So our yellow wire from our lab scope should go to our cam position signal, black to a known good ground. With the lab scope on, this is a representation of the square wave that you should see coming out of that cam sensor once you have it hooked up and are cranking the engine or the engine is running. Again, it shows you the pigtail, it shows you the pinouts, and it shows you the wire colors. Once you've got all that set, hit view meter, the meter will turn on, and you are ready to go. You go to crank it, start it, whatever, and you look for that square wave down here to match the known good square wave, known good uh, signal that you're supposed to be getting up here. Like literally, it's hard to beat this, guys, for the money. This thing will teach you anything you need to know on testing components. There was a, a, a diagnostic specialist at Snap-on who would uh, give uh, presentations at the yearly uh, franchisee conference talking about the guided component test and how easy it is for anyone to pick up the scan tool and start diagnosing components, checking components on a vehicle. He said one year he had, I believe his six or seven year old daughter, handed her the scan tool, booted it up, was doing a diagnostic seminar, told her to go check a fuel injector or ignition coil, something of that nature. Gave her the scanner, said go for it. She went through, picked the year, make, model once he told her, picked the component, picked up everything I just showed you on the component information, hooked up the lab scope leads, hooked it up to the vehicle, and was able to read and diagnose that sensor. <laughs> you know, six, seven year old kid can do it. I mean, the all tails, the launches, I don't know of any other scan tool right now that has the information built into it that Snap-on scan tools do with the guided component test and the troubleshooter for codes. So that's just a small look at it. You get that both with the Zeus and with the Triton. The Triton is just much faster than the Zeus. Or again, it could be the fact that my Zeus is much older now. Could be what's got it a little bit slower. Or the fact that it's Windows based and this is a proprietary software just for diagnostics. So let's go back out and let's go to the scanner. Again, we didn't have to change anything. We're still on our Chevrolet Tahoe 2014. Um, it will ask for some more information now. It'll ask if it's a real wheel drive or a four wheel drive. Again, it's a 5.3 liter. Then you can go to code scan. Code scan will scan every single module in the vehicle with one touch. So old scanners, I don't know about all tail and launch if they've got code scan yet. I don't really keep track of those because I don't own them and I have no, um, you know, I have no reason to purchase one. I'm plenty pleased with my Snap-on scanners. I've had Snap-on scanners for over a decade now. So in a lot of scanners, you got to go into the engine module, look for engine codes. You got to go in the transmission module, look for transmission codes, airbag, ABS, all these individual modules, you have to go into them individually, scan for codes, find them in those. 
code scan hookup hits code scan it'll scan every single one of those modules you know if you have and modern vehicles i mean you can have 17 20 or more modules and it'll give you a list of every module if it found codes yes or no what codes it found now if you have the intelligent diagnostics if you have the data package on uh, when you pull a code you will let's see if i can set that up real quick on this under demonstration when you pull a code, it can, uh, it'll can it give you a quick fix or more information on said code for that particular year, make, and model vehicle. So for demonstration, we've got the choice of BMW, Chevrolet, or Toyota. So let's try a Toyota. And uh, it's a 2016 in this case. It's a Camry demo model. It's a 2.5 liter. We've got our VIN number. It's got 36,361 miles. So we're going to scan that Toyota now. We're going to hit code scan. We're going to scan all the modules on this Toyota. Uh, it's a pre-scan because it just showed up to the shop. So what we've got in this Toyota right now, we've got a P0101, which is a mass airflow circuit range performance problem. We've got a P0037 oxygen sensor heater circuit issue. All right, our code scan is now done. We have no transmission codes. We have no anti-lock brake codes, airbag, body control module. You see we can scan through all these other modules. We've got a green check. Everything's good to go. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Look at all these modules. This is a 2016 Camry. You can see all the modules that are active. Once you get to the bottom, you can look at your readiness models all at one place. Our misfire monitor has run and it is completed. Green check. Our fuel system monitor has completed green check. And then we get down here, we can look at our EGR, VVT, the catalyst, the EVAP, oxygen sensor, and we see that there's a dash in that says that are not completed yet. Well, of course, it's not going to complete those monitors because we have a mass air code and we've got an oxygen sensor code. So again, all your information right here, one screen, easy, one touch to get to it. So let's look at our P0037 oxygen sensor heater control circuit, low bank one sensor two. We look at this code and it opens up the intelligent diagnostic sheet. So we have a chart here for top repairs. Now this links to Fast Track, which is Snap-on's proprietary software, part of their Mitchell and everything else. Everything that reports here is a verified, 100% verified fix, a verified case. This is not like Identifix where anyone can log in and put any information in they want that has an Identifix account, whether it's verified or not. These have to be verified as they fix this particular code. So as we see on the chart, we've got a big yellow line right here. And we look over here at yellow, replace the oxygen sensor. We have 422 confirmed fixes of this code being replacing the oxygen sensor. Below that, we've got um, a couple lines at the very bottom because it's a very low instance of this code. So we've got clean the engine fuel system for of those were verified fixes for this code. Uh, we've got to reprogram the powertrain control module. I'm not seeing it's off the screen how many that was. I'm assuming it's two or three. Uh, replace the engine gasket. Doesn't give you more information than that unless you click on it. Two repaired, two confirmed repairs for this code for that. Replace the catalytic converter manifold and replace the exhaust pipe. One confirmed fix for that. So overwhelming majority, 422 confirmed fixes for this P0037 will replace the oxygen sensor. So that doesn't say go replace the oxygen sensor, charge this customer, hope that's what fixed it. What that's showing you is, hey, there's a high likelihood of at this mileage, this make, model, and engine that at this code, is going to be caused by the oxygen sensor, being that it's a uh, low heater control circuit, most likely the heater has burned out of that oxygen sensor. So what it's telling you is you now need to go into the guided component test, check this oxygen sensor, confirm that it is a blown out heater circuit. Once you confirm that the heater circuit's blown, then you will put an oxygen sensor in this customer's car, clear the codes, drive it, set all the readiness monitors, make sure you confirm that fix and return it to them. It makes it so much easier to get an accurate repair without throwing parts at a car, without guessing. It just makes it so much easier. Also, if there's a current TSB, a technical service bulletin on this particular code make model car, it'll come up here and you can link to that. You can come down here to code specific scanner data that it will pick kids from the engine data that you can monitor to see what's going on with this particular code. There, it will take you also to functional test uh, with the guided component test. Uh, it'll hook up, oh, just hit it by accident. 
but air fuel ratio sensor. So it'll take you right into the guided component test, again, showing you the oxygen sensor, the peak tail, what wires to hook where and what you should see when you hook it up. Super, super intuitive. Like I said, no one else does it like Snap-on scan tools do. So let this load back in again. Uh, we'll come down here to the SureTrack Real Fixes. Now these are verified fixes from other Snap-on users, other people that have SureTrack. So again, Real Fix with PO37, replace the oxygen sensor, customer states check engine lights on, connect scan tool found PO, P0037, oxygen sensor, heater issue, performed a road test while monitoring live scan dena and observed the oxygen sensor, parameter um, was fixed at idle, Anyway, you can go through all the articles of other people that have fixed it with the thing. It's a lot to get into. I've already seen we're at like 23 minutes on this one section. I don't want this video to be forever long. Uh, but let's look at the real quick, the uh, smart data. So we hit smart data. It's, it's um, communicating with the PCM now. Hit continue. Car will be running in this case. It'll bring up our data PIDs. It'll hand pick to look at when looking at the issue with the auction sensor. So as you heard, we got an audible beep. We have a red flag right here for the air fuel uh, bank one sensor one on this data PID. It's giving us a red flag that, hey, you need to look at this, something is wrong here. Go through. Also have a flag between our short-term and long-term fuel trims to check those. We also have a red flag between the total uh, fuel trim uh, for, I think that's bank one being hashtag one. Uh, we also have a tag here by Catalyst Temperatures, and I think that's it. So, again, for young techs that don't know what to look for when they're trying to diagnose this code for the oxygen sensor, that's the great thing about the Intelligent Diagnostics. It'll throw these flags, it'll beep at you to say, hey, look at these PIDs, this is where the problem is, check this out. Let's change this to, it's been a while since I've used this one from the, uh, yeah, here we go. Let's change it to graphing output for the PIDs. So being as a heater control circuit, honestly, the scan data is not gonna be terribly useful for you to, useful to you. You'd go ahead and just go ahead to the guided component test and check the heater circuit on that auction sensor and bingo bammo be done with that fix. So let's go back really quickly to the first code after it stops communicating with the PCM here to the Camry we're ghost hooked to. All right, back out of the code scan menu. Yeah, 30 modules in a 2016 Camry, insane. All right, so let's look at our PO101 mass airflow circuit range performance problem. So in this one, we have much more different fixes. It's not really a clear cut one like that oxygen sensor where it was a bad oxygen sensor due to a burnout heater. So our main confirmed fix here, and it shows you here the mileage. Whoop, fat fingers. So it shows you here the mileage, zero, 25,000, 50,000, 75,000, 100,000, 125,000, 150, 170, 200,000. Again, fat fingers. Uh, but it gives you, um, you know, the most likely cause of that concern around whatever mileage on that make, model, and engine. So our number one repair confirmed fix is replace the mass airflow sensor of 121 confirmed fixes. Clean the mass airflow sensor, 55 confirmed fixes. Clean the throttle body, 35 confirmed fixes. Replace the engine intake air duct, 19. Connected the engine air in take duck 12, reprogram the powertrain control module not showing. I've seen that several times where people have uh, worked on a vehicle and didn't uh, put the intake hose back and secure it to the mass air sensor and cause the air leak and had a mass air code. So uh, likely we've got to replace mass airflow sensor due to uh, a broken wire or bad sensor. No TSBs were found for this issue on the car. We've got the smart data we can look at real quick. Again, we'll get those audible beeps and red flags for any PIDs that are out of spec for things we need to look at. So we got our warning beeps. Let's go look for a red flag. We've got a red flag here for our air fuel Sensor, bank one, sensor one. We've got a red flag here for the fuel trim. 
Again, some of these red flags are still gonna be corresponding to that original code for the auction sensor because both are currently active at the same time. Let's go back out of this and let's go to the guided component test. for this mass air sensor. So we've got a component test, uh, mass air flow sensor, component information, if we're not you know, familiar with this particular make model of Toyota. Uh, this is an analog type sensor that calculates the air mass and velocity of the incoming air charge. This measurement is converted into a voltage signal which the ECM uses to determine the mass of the incoming air charge and strategize the fuel injection correctly. Hot wire type mass air sensor is composed of platinum hot wire intake, air temperature sensor, and control circuit. Hot wire is maintained at a set temperature by constant current flow. To maintain constant current value, PCM varies the voltage applied to the hot wire as the intake airflow tries to cool the wire. Varying voltage in the mass air signal used by the ECM to measure intake airflow mixture. So those that don't know about how this works, uh, there's a heater hot wire, as it said, uh, in the mass airflow sensor. As the engine vacuum pulls air into the engine, that moving air tries to cool that wire. The PCM has to increase the voltage to that wire to keep it at the set temperature as the air tries to cool it. Uh, based on that calculation of how much voltage it has to put to it as it cools that wire, it knows how much air the engine is sucking into it and then can calculate how much fuel it needs to add to that air to have a good air fuel mixture. So that's what the air mass air flow sensor does, how it works in this particular application. There's older designs, there's different designs. They don't all measure the exact same way. So there's our mass air flow sensor. A lot of them now have the intake air temperature uh, sensor made into them. It's not a separate sensor. So this one is a much uh, more, uh, more wires on it than uh, older vehicles mass air flow sensors. So uh, wire one and wire two is our idle, a idle intake air temperature sensor signal and ground. And then we've got a 12 volt power supply source. Then we've got the mass air flow sensor ground, the mass air flow sensor signal out. So five wire sensor, again, tells you the best load, uh, best location to test it. So we go back out of the component information after we've brushed up on what this sensor is and how it works. Let's go to a DC voltage test. So you'll hook your yellow wire to the mass signal, signal, mass sensor signal, black to an own good ground. During cranking, voltage, stop moving, voltage should be 1.3 to 1.6 volts. At warm idle voltage should be 0 .07, 0 0.7 to 1.7 volts. Sorry, I'm having trouble reading here. As at warm idle voltage should be 0 0.7 to 1.7 volts. As intake air volume increases, mass air signal voltage increases. Voltage should change smoothly with no dropouts or glitches. Again, tells you where to hook up, view the meter. So as the engine is running, you should get a constant signal coming out. Uh, old way to check mass air sensors a lot of times, if you took like a screwdriver handle and tapped on the sensor, Normally that would get to glitch. You'd see a bunch of crazy, you'd see a smooth line go crazy like an EKG. That would show a glitch. Something was broken inside. Maybe the wire was uh, broken and touching and connecting when you jiggled it. Things of that nature to test it. Uh, but it tells you exactly what it is, how to test it and where to test it. So, I mean, again, it's hard to beat Snap-on's diagnostic scan tools. It is an all-in-one package and gives you the most information all at one point, especially with inti intelligent diagnostic. It's just really, really hard to beat. So we've got all of a lot of stuff. Again, this is really nice how they've changed this, how you can go between everything. Instead of having to go back out to the main menu and jump back in, you can switch between stuff in individual modules. Um, they do have this, which I thought was really cool. They added years ago, uh, but the OBD2 connector has a built-in flashlight. How many times have you been on a dark dash trying to hook this sucker up and you can't see and you gotta grab your pen light or turn your cell phone on? You just turn on the light built into it and stick it right into the plug. Neat as that. The uh, wireless module for the Zeus has a built-in flashlight as well. Again, super cool trick. Uh, so previous vehicle, you can go in and check the other cars you've scanned in the past. 
and uh, find what codes they had when they were in, things of that nature. So it keeps track of that stuff. Not to the extent the, the shop management software on the Zeus does, but still it gives you a good uh, check of things. So now that I've talked forever and ever, way too much about this, um, we're gonna take this, hook it up to my 2013 Subaru Crosstrek, play around, look at functional tests, see what it can actually do, see if they've added the capability of looking at, uh, say, Subaru EyeSight system, which mine doesn't have, so I don't know if I'll even be able to show that if it's got it in the menu. Uh, we'll look to see if it will have the functional test now where you can do uh, the clear learned uh, functions on the CVT, do a CVT relearn and uh, you know, just see what is added in the 21.2 software compared to 18.2, and if it's worth upgrading, or if this scanner is worth uh, perhaps me trading my Zeus in for it, just for the speed and simplicity of it, um, we shall see. All right, guys, we're now on the cross track, just hooked up. As you can see, it automatically pulled the VIN number, connected immediately. I'm gonna go ahead and do a code scan. I know there's no codes in this car. I'm pretty sure there's no codes in this car. There's no check engine light. So we'll go ahead and scan it and uh, see what's going on. Looks like we got some ABS codes. And I love about the snap on scanners, you can just kick the kickstand out and clamp it to the steering wheel. Seventy-five percent done. Eighty percent done. What do we got? VDC automatic transmission control module fault. Stoplight switch malfunction. History. Got some battery. Let's see. Battery power supply. Battery backup power supply. I did kill the battery in it a while back. So combo meter lost control. Lost communication. So, no lights on, all of our readiest monitors have passed, so probably it's going to clear all this stuff out, pretty sure most of this stuff's old information, because uh, I don't know when the last time any of these codes were cleared, it's been over a year since we had the uh, scan tool on it, so let's go ahead and clear all codes that were read during code scan. Focus. Then we'll get into the functional test, see if um, see if uh, we can uh, do that CVT learning function. Subarus are so weird about this. Turn everything off for 30 seconds or so and turn it back on to clear the coats completely. All right, so now that we've gone through our code scan, let's go back. Actually, we'll stay in code scan. So, uh, I got a transmission section. Go to, see, while well, we got codes, clear codes, data, troubleshooter, we do not have any functional test. So that means that we cannot go through the learn procedure. So even with 21.2, you Subaru people, Snap-on still does not have the ability to do what the Subaru Select Monitor can do. It's about service resets, replace relearn turbocharger, replace relearn cooling fan, replace reset fuel pump, reset occupational occupant classification data, Replace, relearn the seat. Okay, so we can do that, but we cannot do the CBT learning unless it's in another area. Which I don't think it is. Sorry about the focus jumping around on my phone. Automatic headlight leveling, electronic power steering, wheel alignment, combination meter, multi-function display, tire and wheel service, wall state reset, occupant detection system, airbag, any light transmission. No. Hmm. Interesting. So 
So yeah, unfortunately we do not have that ability still. I might head light yeah. Hmm. Another good thing about the snap-on scanner is now you get oil specs and resets right here on the scan tool if you've got the subscription and data package. But yeah, unfortunately, we cannot do transmission learn for the CVT. What functional test do we have for the engine, if any? See, that's the, what I always talk about. Snap-on has never had good coverage for Subaru vehicles. Code's data actuator test. Uh, so you got to put a fuse on under the hood block, like the old uh, test connector connection. The old green connectors under the dash, generic functions. Yeah. Yeah, pretty pretty sorry. <laughs> really, really low usability of snap ons scan tools with Subaru still. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hook up to my Duramax, my two thousand four, because I know it's got some codes in it. I know what they're for. Well, I know what the reason is behind them. But let's see what uh our intelligent diagnostics tells us about that. All right, now we're in my 2004 Sierra 3500 Duramax. And uh, let's see what we can do on it. Always a much uh, better source with GM's, Ford's, domestic vehicles with snap-on scan tools. Instant connect, pulled up the VIN number. All good to go there. Let's see. I'm going to engine, automatic, no code scan on the older vehicles, like pre-2008, I believe it is. So this being a 2004. Let's see, display codes. So we got a PO1, PO401 insufficient EGR flow, PO404 EGR feedback signal out of range. These two are because of an EGR block off plate. I know what the cause of that is. I'll replace the EGR valve is the most common issue. No worries there. Again, got a blocker plate. Insufficient flow is probably the same thing. Yeah, replace the EGR valve. So here's another one. lost communication with glow plug module. Haven't really investigated this, and I think a common fault is the glow plug module itself dies. Um, yeah, replace glow plug, plug module 53 confirmed fixes and replace the glow plug 6. I know that my number 8 glow plug is broken uh, where it goes to the glow plug harness. It snapped off. So it could be either one of these, uh, but normally I think it has a code for each individual glow plug circuit. Um, I don't live in the north. It doesn't get really below... 30, 32 degrees, I don't have issues starting this truck in the cold. So it's not really a concern to me. One day I might fix it, but it doesn't for a check engine light. So not really worried about it. So let's see if we have in our guided component test, glow plug system, component information, glow plug operation, we got the plugs, just one wire to them, and the uh, glow plug module, all of the circuits for each glow plug out. This is a 2004, which is a split model between the LB7 and LLY. Mine's an LLY, which is the preferred diesel. Um, yeah, so again, the good thing about snap-on scan tools, if you're working on Chevrolet, GMC, you know, any GM product, Ford, any Chrysler products, Dodge, Ram, things of that nature, you've got a ton of accessibility that you don't have with Subaru. Subaru's the black sheep with snap-on scanners. Even Toyota, Honda, uh, some of the other larger 
Asian manufacturers, you have much more coverage, much more tests, much more functionality uh, than you do on the Subaru. So back in the engine functional test, what can we do? I'm going to do a cylinder contribution test, output controls. These are all the things, the bi-directional controls you can do on just my 2004 Duramax compared to the none you can do on my 2013 Subaru Crosstrek. So yeah, if you are a Subaru guy and thinking about getting a new snap-on scan tool, save your money and uh, buy a Subaru Select Monitor 3 or 4. Get the Denso DSTi and uh, lease the Subaru Select Monitor um, programming subscription. But independent shop, you see every make and model under the sun come in. Great scan tools, lots of accessibility. Just there's a lot of lacking on Subaru and European vehicles, BMW, Mercedes, Audi, Volkswagen, all of those. Uh, there was a big lack of information in Snap-on's diagnostic stuff for the German cars. Uh, they did update that about 10 years ago or so and added an exponentially large amount of European coverage. Don't have a European car to check, uh, but you do have expert mode now that you didn't have before. There's just a lot more usability for the European vehicles. Let's go to demonstration real quick. BMW. I forgot the BMW is in here and uh, see what we can look at. It's a 2013 3 Series 3 liter. E91. Oh, no, I'm connected to my truck. Let me unconnect that real quick before I screw up. So, code scan, pre scan on this BMW. We've got electric water pump, speed difference, combustion, misfire cylinder one. Scanning so far 28, 30, 32, 34. Lots of modules on a BMW. 43, 44. 50 modules. That's the 2013. We got 52 modules. We'll look at all these modules. There's a module for the antenna. Lots and lots of modules on BMW. So it looks like there's a lot more capability with the German cars than there was a while back. I don't work on German cars, so don't really have a need to worry about what the European coverage is. Now that I'm basically focused on Subarus, that's why I'm focusing on the coverage from Subaru. But uh, all your same information, most likely fixes all the great information right here on one screen. Again, hard to beat the Snap-on scan tools for an all-inclusive package for diagnostic equipment. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.